Welcome to another interview, Alicia Perza, 17 years old, world champion, European champion, just an exceptional athlete, and I'm really looking forward to present to you her story, her workout advice. Also, Black Weekend is ahead with uh, the 23rd to 27th of November with the biggest sale of the year on clothing, on equipment, and I'm really looking forward to jumping into the interview now. Let's go. I'm sitting here with probably one of the most strong athletes, female athletes in the world with only 17 years old. I'm super impressed uh, by your power, by your achievements already. And uh, yeah, welcome to the podcast, Alicia. Thank you for inviting me here. I was looking forward to this interview for a long time. And uh, yeah, we finally made it. And uh, yeah, maybe we can start off. The question that burns in my head is how is it possible with 17 to be such a powerhouse like you are? How, how, how is it possible? I mean, I don't know. I don't really feel like I'm that strong. I mean, yeah, there are so many way stronger. But I, I think it's because uh, if, if you like what you're doing and you work in that direction, you, you achieve anything. So you think there are stronger athletes out there uh, than you? Um, do you think they are, like, are they 17 as well? Or are they already pro more progressed? I don't know how old are they, but for sure I, they are uh, young as well. Okay, because, like, for the people who know you, you're extremely sh strong in, in the push moves, in handstand push-ups, uh, but also in, in dynamics. So you're like really a, a well-rounded athlete in, in terms of statics and dynamics, which is uh, where, yeah, really unusual or rare in, in the sport. Um, because on the one hand, you have like uh, athletes who are super strong in dynamics and who can do like really uh, crazy combos, but um, they don't have the best statics. And I think for you, the balance between the both is like um, super, super um, yeah, equalized and balanced. And this makes you like a super interesting athlete to watch uh, on every competition. And you're doing a lot of competitions. But um, yeah, maybe we can start off with your story. How did you get in touch with the sport? How did you start with calisthenics? I think it was 2019. I was just playing on my PC uh, and my mom uh, started, wanted to go to the gym to lose some weight and um, try, try to make me make some exercise that she was doing on the gym just to make some, some sport, some activity besides computer. <laughs> and I started with uh, uh, some um, like abs workout, but I really liked like it and enjoy it and then i uh, i i wanted to learn the push up and then more push ups and more push ups and and still at that at that time i didn't know what calisthenics was only later maybe after i think one year or maybe two years of doing only push ups and plank I uh, discover calisthenics on the internet. Crazy. And still today, you are super strong in push-ups. I saw your challenges you're doing on the street, challenging some some guys. Um, and you're just, doing... Just muscle memory. Yeah. So how many push-ups do you do these days in one set, Max? Um, these days, I think in my videos, I was close to my maximum. I did 120 something. But That's... it's it's uh, it's so low if I compare with my maximum when I was doing only push-ups. What do you mean with that? It's so low. You you did more back then. Yes, I did. You won't believe. I I I, I don't really say this because it's hard to believe. Sometimes I, I don't believe. Me, <laughs> I did five five hundred in a row. No. Yes. 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 I have, I, have only, I have only one video, but I did that in many days. Like I, I did only push-ups every day, so. Mm -hmm. But in push-ups for a year. Yeah, in you know. one set, in one set, and you went up with your butt to relax the shoulders, or you stayed in the plank. No, no, no. only um, uh, let's say break. It was that some I just a bit. Um, how do you say? I raised my hand a bit. Yeah. And how old have you been when you've done like 500 push-ups? Um, I think 12 or 13. 
Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. So you're already like working out for a long time. Um, as I heard, you started more with the basics. You didn't uh, start with uh, freestyle or gymnastics uh, stuff, but you started with basics, with push-ups, with uh, yeah. app exercises, uh, with plank, etc. Um, and you never did gymnastics in your life, or no gymnastics. No, I only did the only sport I did that I was let's say almost consistent was cycling crazy that's uh interesting and you think this strength that you build with uh with basics how many years of basics and when did you start with freestyle then three years only basics and then how was you how were your beginnings in statics dynamics how did you get in touch with the stuff that you do today yes uh, first competition um I went, it was basic competition, but they have a little bit of um, showing for freestyle. And that's where I saw dynamics. And I, I, I fall in love with dynamics since then I, I tried to learn. Okay. And how were your beginnings? Uh, did you have a teacher? Did you, um, yeah, do it yourself? I know you, uh, I think you told me that, uh, that you watched also the tutorials of Daniel Fleefield, but that was like way later, I guess. <laughs> but uh, how did you start in the beginning? Actually, my first uh, freestyle, uh, the dynamic move was shrimp flip and learn from Daniel Fleefield. Wow. <laughs> From, from YouTube. No, uh, in Romania, it's not that known. Calisthenics still is not that known. Uh, so yeah, only YouTube. That's where I, I took the information. Wow. Okay. So good job for Daniel, uh, for anybody looking for a good freestyle tutorials. Um, I think he has shrimp flip, maybe 540. Um, I think he has a few skills out there, uh, which are still like quite unique, the tutorials, because not a lot of people do dynamics tutorials. And, um, the special thing about you is, uh, what I think is, uh, your, your backyard, uh, bar. Um, so you're training alone in the garden as it, as it seems for me, can you explain how, how, like, why, why do you train alone? Is, isn't there somebody doing freestyle around you? Isn't, aren't there bars, public ones? Tell us. So yeah, first, um, we have some parks, but only you can do maximum pull-ups on, on them. It's not for freestyle. And in my town, uh, the calisthenics community is not that, well, we, we don't know each other because we don't really have a park where we can go and train. So we, we better do it uh, at home. But I'm starting to meet some people that are doing calisthenics and sometimes I'm uh, asking them to come to my freestyle bar. <laughs> I think it's the best in the town. <laughs> and I also have mats. But um, to train alone, for me, is how I got used since the beginning. It, it is like a therapy. But yeah, I, I know for, for, for this sport, uh, we should be a team. Yeah, so I feel when I train alone, I'm training alone, uh, I feel more productive, let's say, because this is how I got used. Interesting. So, um, yeah, you don't know how it is to, uh, to train in a group, like at least regularly. Um, so when you're training alone in the garden, how is your mentality? How is your mindset? Are you like super focused? Are you sometimes on your phone? How, how, how are you structuring your workout? Well, I usually do dynamics in the garden. The rest, I do like statics and I'm doing in, in the house, yeah. Yeah, I can say I'm trying to be as focused as possible, but in the breaks, yeah, I'm staying on the phone. And you're listening to music and uh, like really trying to get into the zone uh, of uh, your your dynamics sesh. Yeah, here is another strange thing about me. I don't really use music. I, I train on quiet. <laughs> That's crazy. Why? I don't know. This is how I I, I used, I get used. 
but yeah, lately my friends from other towns say it's to try to listen to music. And yeah, I feel like it helps with statics mm -hmm. to have that drop. True. So on the next freestyle competition, you will ask everyone to put off the music uh, so you can concentrate better. <laughs> of course not. It's better <laughs> in a competition is good with music. Yes. Nice. And uh, yeah, I just saw a few days, weeks ago um, that also I think you're, especially with 17, and I see it on all the events, your family plays a big part um, of your athletic career. And uh, you uploaded the, the reel with your grandfather uh, who built uh, the bar with you um, or your mother who travels to the, to the events with, your, uh, with you. And um, yeah, tell us more about the, the importance about, uh, of, of family support. Yeah, of course, especially for me, but I think for everyone, the family support is crucial. Like it, it really can make a difference. And I know I, I wouldn't be here without them. That's true. So, um, yeah, tell us about your workout schedule. How do you schedule the week? How does a regular workout week look for you? Okay, I can say that now I'm not that... Um, Structured? Uh, Yeah, now I'm not that structured. I'm a little bit freestyling <laughs> with, <laughs> with my workouts. Uh, and I'm also preparing for the next competition. It's strange because uh, it was so full this, uh, this period after the World Championship. I had so many uh, place and it's also school, final year. Yeah, I'm, I'm really full. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really structured now, but when, but I can say how I prepare for, for the next competition, mm -hmm. because I think this is how my workouts will look like until mm -hmm. beast of the bars. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing one day dynamics and com combos of dynamics and one day statics and combo statics. Yeah. I always do basics at the end of the workouts. So two workout days and then a day of rest or like... Um, no, no, no. Like dynamics, statics, dynamics, statics, and uh, maybe one day off. And how long, long does one session uh, last usually for you? Depends, uh, especially for dynamics. Sometimes I can do one hour and sometimes three. Mm -hmm. So yeah, between one and three hours, I think. Okay. So the next competition is Beast of the Bars. Uh, you said, or is there, there is still like no, Brussels there is cup? Brussels, yeah, yeah. Brussels. Okay. I will go to there too. And how do you handle the pressure with uh, last year of school and, uh, workout? How do you find the good balance between? Yeah, it's, uh, actually it's very balanced after school to do workout. It's, it's the perfect balance because you are disconnected to the school when you are workout, when you train. And when you are at school, you disconnect to the trainings. So I think it's the best. True. Yeah. And do you already have plans what to do after uh, school finishes? Uh, yeah, I was thinking to go on nutrition. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but this is what I will try. So to st uh, start start studying nutrition, uh, you mean, or yes. getting a degree yes. there? Yes. Yes. Because I think that is the most, it's a thing that I really don't know. The part of eating, I don't know almost mm -hmm. anything I need. And I see that for a lot of young athletes, uh, especially they um, somehow don't have to think too much about uh, nutrition um, and they still perform. They can just uh, uh, squeeze everything out of their body. But I think and like at a certain age or also at a certain um, level, you like nutrition gives an extra boost if you think about it, if you plan it well. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to see how you will perform when you uh, yeah, invest even more uh, focus into nutrition. How, how does your nutrition look like right now? Yeah, it's not that good <laughs> right now. I'm eating whatever, well, not fast food, but sweets, yeah, every day. <laughs> So I'm eating um, the food I make or my mom or my 
or sometimes food from my grandma, but not fast food, only sweets. It's not that clean, but yeah. And is it uh, typical Romanian food or what, what food is it? Like, is it a lot of meat? Do you have any, are you vegetarian? Do you eat, uh, you, you don't eat something or you eat something a lot? Yeah, it's mostly Romanian food. Yeah, usually Romanian food, I don't know. And when I don't have anything in my house, like soup or, you know, I'm just making um, eggs. But you don't count calories or something uh, with, uh, or count like uh, how much protein you eat or something just by, by feeling of how you feel you do it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not counting calories and I don't know how, I, I'm not even thinking how many protein I take in. Yeah. So what do you think, um, looking back, what has been the, the biggest factor of, of your success? Do you have like really good genetics? Is it because of your family? Is it because you work so hard? Is it because you uh, found the best tutorials on the, on the, on the internet by, by Flayfield? Uh, what, what is the reason for your success or like the main factor? I think it's a little bit of uh, everything. This is the, the key to work hard. And of course, if you have uh, the support from your family and friends, it's a big, big plus. So you would say that you have good genetics um, as well? Yeah, maybe I have because I'm not that tall. Yeah, I think this is the only thing. Okay. And how, how tall and heavy are you uh, right now, like in competition preparation? I'm not really in the shape with my kilograms because okay. the winter is coming and it's if I'm if I'm too low with my weight I will uh, freeze <laughs> <laughs> so I now I have uh, 53 and tall how tall I am one 156 I think and uh, when you say in the winter you're a little bit heavier are you stronger in in winter or in summer when do you feel the strongest the summer okay in the winter it's it's so strange uh if if when you train uh, outside because you are always cold and it's strange for joints and muscles mm -hmm. so you continue training outside in the winter and you just put on more clothing and uh, that's that's it yeah two two hoodies from garnation <laughs> <laughs> nice okay so um yeah super interesting um because yeah when it rains you still train yeah yeah I'm, yeah I'm still training when it rains well I can do in in my house statics but sometimes I train when it rains too basics in the rain yeah. because okay. it, it gives you adrenaline to train in the rain yeah it's really that's cool. true so um what would you say was the strongest point of your career? When have you been like the, the in this in the best shape in the best uh, version? Is it right now? Uh, is it was it swoop because it was summer? Uh, will it be beast of the bars because you trained so hard right now? What do you think? I think at every competition I'm I'm pushing my best. I'm trying at least, but for for now I think at the, the world championship I was in the best shape i mean i was very prepared for for that is it uh, was it the most important competition for you this year yeah of course that championship <laughs> yes true okay so th this is the title that you are looking forward the most and um is it also the goal to defend it next year or what what is what are the the next goals for you what is, what is the biggest driver for you uh, on the competition uh, part, yeah, I would like to try to maintain uh, on the top, top because there's a saying that is is harder to maintain to stay in the top than to reach. So yeah, I, I want I would like to to do that. I I will try to do that. And on the other side, like uh, me and my mother. We, we want to try to do a federation in Romania. We are just making 
uh, association first, and then we will try to to make events, maybe even international events. I don't know. We will see. First, I have to to finish uh, the school, <laughs> and then yeah, this is a, the the bigger goals for the future. Yes, and you're also doing YouTube. Um, so, um, are you also planning to do tutorials, or what? What can people expect from on your YouTube channel? Um, yes, I want to do tutorials, and also that behind the the bars series that I have, I have I think three videos that I have to edit. <laughs> so hard to, it's so hard to edit. It, it took so much time. It takes so much time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I want to do tutorials too. I have one. I think I have only one, but I would like to do more. What would be your advice to beginners out there? If we have uh, some beginners listening that uh, also have the goal of reaching your level of doing international competitions or like just becoming their strongest version, what would be your advice to them? Well, first, if is a totally beginner, to do the basics, of course, and to don't, well, everyone say, says that you have to do the basics, but you really have to do it. Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, start competing earlier than you think. Because I also was pushed by my, my mother. I wasn't prepared to compete to my first international competition, the World Championship from 2022. In my head, it was no what what I can do there. It is no no chance for me. What what I I don't have what to do there. Mm -hmm. But uh, you gain if you have in mind and you know you will go to a will, you will go to a competition. You have so much motivation, and you incre increase your level like crazy. So to do the basics, um, and to start like. Uh, start competing, start showing yourself earlier than you think. Yes. So um, maybe let's let's talk about the basics. How would you, um, you, you did push-ups, pull-ups, plank, like core exercises. Um, what, what exercise do you think are really good to build a foundation for beginners? So I can say what I did. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the best, but I can mm -hmm. say what I did. Mm -hmm. um, so first I did, yeah, as you said, I did I did the abs workout actually with variation of, yeah, how it's full, the, the internet is full of that. Mm -hmm. um, plank, but again, plank is more work and push-ups when you are passing 50 is more, more work mentally, not really. And it's good too. I think that helped me now a lot. It's not really strength that you gain from more than 50 push-ups, but it's mental strength, which is very important. Yeah. So yeah, pull-ups, um, dips. Also later, I already, I think I did the 50, no, wait, 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 500 push-ups and I, I couldn't do one pull-up because I, I didn't have a bar. So it's, you know, it's not that much strength, physical, but it's mental when you do push-ups. So yeah, for physical strength, it's pull-ups, dips, uh, even muscle-up. I think that is the, the first skill that anyone wants to learn. We, can we call it basic? I think we can, uh, like not for complete beginners, but I think in general it builds basic strength. Um... That helps for freestyle and uh, later so as well. Yeah, muscle up is uh, a really important skill to have and to do. This is it. Did you ever have the, the mental barrier? Because I'm interested, you're doing a lot of skills and uh, strength moves that are super, super hard. Um, and uh, there are not a lot of women out there who do the skills you do with uh, handstand push-ups, with 90 degree, uh, etc. So. Did you ever have like a, the mental barrier that uh, ha nobody, like nearly nobody does it in the world? What uh, the, the things that I want to learn? Um, 
how, why should I be able to learn them? Because I can imagine this this thing, learning something that you don't see a lot of times, it's quite it can be quite intimidating. Um, but how how did you approach these skills that are super super hard uh, without having a teacher that can show you? You mean uh, the ninety degrees and uh, handstand push ups? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I just uh, like so much push ups. I, I didn't know that there are no girls, or you know, I saw these skills maybe in competitions with boys in Romania, where I competing with boys. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I never thought like there is no girls. I never, uh, I never knew that there are no, not that much girls. But there are, there are girls doing. Yeah, but it's still, it's super rare. Uh, it, it's super, super rare, uh, I think. And uh, yeah, so competing in Romania and we, uh, in general, the sport is not that well uh, advanced that uh, we have weight categories. We have uh, even like uh, men and women uh, sometimes compete against each other. Um, so this was the case for you. So you had different standards. You had different um, uh, things that were normal for you that you tried to, to beat, right? The, this thing that I compete with the boys um, made me increase my level higher maybe than a if I would compete with girls because it's a higher level, you you aim for high. And aiming for high is something that I see is a 50-50 chance. Either you have um, the, the right mindset, let's call it, and it pushes you, it, it gives you a high goal to go after and to um, like really push for, or it can also lead to being frustrated, like frustrated because um, you think, oh, it's too, too much and I, I won't reach it. And I think it's really how you deal with these situations, because I think it can also be really demotivating for someone to compete, uh, for a girl to compete with boys. Um, and um, to, yeah, it, it can lead to giving up, but seemingly you had the right mindset and it pushed you. Um, so can you maybe tell us about how, how does it feel um, to, to, for you to have like an extremely high goal um, does it motivate you to think about it at, at all? Uh, yeah, in my case, of course, it motivates me a lot to really reach that goal. And when I see, for example, now girls doing crazy statics, I want that. I want that too. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to say uh, in the competing with the boys, I was never on the last place. So this is probably, this was my motivation. Maybe this helped. Even in my first competition, freestyle competition, I beat one guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> nice. so of course I was motivated. Crazy. So what are the goals that you are currently working for? Like skills, um, combos? Um, can you tell us more about uh, the sports side, your goals right now? Combos, hmm, I'm not really sure. I I don't uh, have in my mind any crazy combos, but I know I have to learn more skills because I already, all my skills that I have, um, I'm, let's say, almost mastering them and I can combine them almost however I want. So I want to focus on learning more skills and I have one dynamic in my mind, but mm. it's secret until I unlock it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like a, a goal, a goal for strength. On a strength, I would like to learn Entrada the Angel one mm -hmm. day. But I don't know with Hefesto, it's so strange because I'm always injured. It's true. What the people say that you are you get injured from Hefesto, yeah, is true. I'm always at least a bit injured. What injury? Is it the wrist? Is it the biceps? Uh, what is it? It was all of them. I, okay. At the beginning was wrist, uh, then uh, uh, like elbow somewhere here. Now it's uh, shoulder. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, it's not that bad. Okay. But still, 
Yeah, it's it's a dangerous move. Uh, I think it's uh, something that uh, doesn't come with uh, no risks. But um, yeah, there's a lot of things in life and in, in the sport as well. Uh, there are no big rewards without risks. So um, yeah, you have to to find a way how to achieve it for you if if it's, if it's your goal. Nice. So um, Brussels is uh, is ahead the competition. Um, yeah, uh, you said that currently the preparation due to school is a little bit less uh, structured, but uh, still you're on a good way. Um, can you tell us about the mindset that uh, h how you go into these competitions? How do you prepare mentally for them? Um, I'm just thinking. Uh, I, I'm trying to think that um, the person who trains the most will win so if i i lose is because the other person train more and work harder than me i think this is a way of explaining something about <laughs> i think that's super super interesting that's that's a really good mindset because like this you take out all the, all of the the fears that can happen when you fail when you uh like when the judging uh the judges don't see your your strength or like have different opinions you take out all of these things you can't influence but you focus on the thing that you can influence and you can train harder today you can uh not skip the session tomorrow so for you it's um more about focusing on what you can influence and uh change today right exactly yeah you you can control what others do is the only thing you can do is to focus on what you can control. Nice. So I think this mindset set helps a lot uh, on days, especially when you're not motivated to train and you think yourself, uh, I had this, uh, I had the thought yesterday during my workout every day, 1% better. And it's uh, kind of the same, you know, like every workout, you get a little bit better, a little bit better. And it's just about the, the work that you put in uh, to, to see what comes out of your body later. So you're aiming for first place, right? Um, for Brussels. Yeah, of course, I'm aiming for that. But yeah, it's, it's not a thing you can control it. That's Only true how hard you train and I can say that I I'm not that I'm not training that hard like I train for a world championship for example so if someone is training harder they can beat me of course and for you it would be okay yeah this is the um, mentality how I want to go to yeah, every competition Mm -hmm. Because I I saw many podcasts of you and yeah uh, I heard that it's so much pressure after you won once and then when you go again and you have to defend your title you feel so much pressure but I will try to not feel that much pressure because yeah if someone trained harder than me they will beat me. <laughs> Nice. If not, yeah, I will. If not, I will win, yeah. Yeah, but I think it's really healthy uh, to think like this and not to put too much pressure on yourself, to be too hard with yourself um, and to just be honest. And um, yeah, if, if you didn't focus, if you have like different focuses right now in life with school, um, with uh, all the side projects, um, I think it, it's totally fair to say, hey, this person worked out more than me and worked harder and um, yeah I think it's good for yourself to not become frustrated and to dis be disappointed that's cool yes because yeah the, the key is to be consistent yeah. in, in every aspect of life great um, yeah so we will be looking forward to to your performance in Brussels uh, I'm really curious about how it will go and I'm already looking forward to see you in December at Beast of the Bars in Stockholm um, it will be a, a big big event again and um, yeah I'm, I'm really curious to see your progression from last year's um, event and um, yeah then uh, yeah, we're slowly coming to an end uh, of, of the interview. 
Um, I'm super thankful that you took the time that uh, you shared uh, of uh, yeah much more of your journey. I think it's like always when you see uh, exceptional athletes like you uh, on social media. I think what's missing for the people is to hear the or see the transparency um, of how they got there. And uh, for you, it's like really. Uh, I think I even wrote to you uh, same story with your grandfather who who built your park was the same for me. And I think like family support plays such a big role, uh, especially when you're a young athlete and um, you try to find your way in life. I think it's super important to have a family standing behind you to support yourself um, and um, yeah, to support your good new habits. So. Yeah, I just wish uh, all the best for you and your family uh, that you continue this journey uh, and uh, yeah, with your athletic career, but also the sport development in Romania with your mother uh, sounds super, super nice. And um, yeah, just uh, all the best for your goals. Thank you and wish you all the best for you and your family too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Then, uh, yeah, enjoy your day and uh, thanks everyone for listening and uh, yeah, have a good day.